Bitcoin boom beating gold and silver. What does that mean? It means you better buy as much as you can now. The, the train is moving, the dollar is dying, silver is still affordable for everyone. And as the dollar crashes, what counts is not price, but how many coins of gold, silver, or Bitcoin do you own? And why I sent this here is this, is because um, I first started buying silver in 1964 when I was 17 years old. And the reason is I didn't know, I was a kid, you know, a high school kid. And I saw this little copper tinge around the dimes and the quarters and the half dollars. I didn't know what that means, but there's a law called Gresham's Law. And Gresham's Law says there's something that we as human beings know what's real or fake. And apparently as a kid, I kind of knew that anything with a copper tinge around the silver, I mean the dime, quarter or half dollar was fake. So I would take, I, was, I used to caddy for the golf. You know, I played golf, so I caddy to make money to pay, pay for my golf. And um, I would take my caddy money and I'd take it into the bank and I'd trade it in for rolls of dimes, quarters and half dollars and I'd go through the coins and if I saw anything with copper on it, I'd kick it back. And then I'd rewrap them and take it back to the bank with extra money. So I did that for about a year. I just kept collecting dimes, quarters, and half dollars. And I had this whole bag of what they call bulk silver today. But I just kind of knew it was fake. And then I went off to school in New York. And when I came home, <laughs> my mother spent it. <laughs> she. She apparently did not know the difference between real silver and fake silver, but that's why our family was poor. But anyway, um, then in Vietnam, uh, I got, got I got to Vietnam in January 1972, and as soon as I got there, my rich dad sent me a letter, but those were snail mail. I mean, it, it took a long time the mail to get to you. And he says, watch out, he says, the world's going to change. Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. And I didn't even know what gold was because we weren't allowed to own gold. In 1933, I believe, it was illegal for Americans to own gold. So I didn't know what gold was. So my co-pilot and I fly behind enemy lines because the North Vietnamese Army had run south and the gold mine was in its way. So we're flying behind enemy lines and that's when I started negotiating. Gold was at $35 an ounce in 1971. And by the time I got to the gold dealer, I had this gold mine, this little Vietnamese woman with red teeth. And I tried to buy gold from her at a discount. <laughs> so I thought, well, it's $35 an ounce. It's $50 an ounce today because it was trying to rise. And she wouldn't move. She says, no, it's spot, spot. I didn't know what spot meant. And here we are, my two, my co-pilot and I were college graduates. And this little Vietnamese woman, I don't think she went to college, but she knew more about money than he and I did. But that was my introduction to gold. And I didn't buy any gold that day, but I, I let our, our aircraft carrier sailed into Hong Kong. And that's when I bought my first gold coin, a Krugerrand for about $50. I still have that Krugerrand today, and it's worth approximately $2,000. So that's why I'm kind of a gold book. So I've been, so I don't save dollars because I don't trust the US dollar. And I just save gold and silver and recently Bitcoin. And the reason is, is because of 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, dollar, the dollar became fake. So now that COVID has hit and they're print, you know, they printed more money in 2020 than they did in the first 200 years of our country and still people are saving dollars. You should be buying some gold, some silver, and we can afford it, Bitcoin. Silver today is a bargain. I mean, today is November, around November 15th, I think, or whatever it is. And I can buy a silver eagle for about 30 bucks. And everybody in the world can afford 30 bucks. But the average person has been conditioned to think about paper, fake money you know, fake dollars. At the same time, they're printing as much money as they possibly can. They give it to their rich friends, they don't give it to us. And then 
they print it and interest rates keep going down. So in 1974, when I got out of the Marine Corps, if I had a million dollars, which I didn't, I could put a million dollars in 74 into a savings loan, a bank, in a certificate of deposit, and they would pay me 15% on my million dollars. So a lot of people have made a lot of money. They just put their money into the bank and they're being paid 15% interest. So a million dollars back in 74 was worth approximately $150,000. Now it's a lot of, not a lot of money to retire on, but you could have retired on $150,000 in 1974. Today I take a million dollars into the bank, I might get 2%. So that means it went from $150,000 to $20,000. And after taxes, that $20,000 might be worth $15,000. In other words, since 1974, the US dollar has lost 90% of its value. And people still say to their kids, save money. You've got to be crazy. They're gonna, now that, you know, now that the elections are over and all this, I don't care if it's Trump or Biden, they're going to have to print so much money just to pay for all of the social entitlement programs so people don't riot. They can't afford to have any more rioting. So they're going to print more and more money and people are still saving dollars or yen or euro or pesos. Right now, you should be saving gold, silver or Bitcoin. And the thing was, is in the year 2000, I started buying gold at $250 an ounce. And today it's worth 10 times that much, approximately. So I'm very happy with my gold. And silver was like $2 or $3 or something. And now it's worth 30. And the Bitcoin I bought, thank God I was buying it at 9,000. And today it's worth over a million, about worth over a million dollars. But the reason for that has nothing to do with gold, silver, or Bitcoin. It has to do with the incompetence of the Federal Reserve Bank or the corruption of the Federal Reserve Bank, the U.S. Treasury, and Wall Street. So I'm not saying Bitcoin, you know, and people get into what I call pissing matches. Which is better, gold or Bitcoin? Who cares? The question is, how much do you have? <laughs> That's all that counts right now. Because the reason you buy gold, silver, or Bitcoin is for the same reason. If you trust the US government or the whole, the central banks, the Fed and Wall Street, then save money. But if you don't, then buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And the thing I like about Bitcoin is this, is that I can run with it. It's just a number in my head. In my trouble with my gold and silver, I got so much of it, I have to lug it. It's hard to get it around. So I, when I started looking into Bitcoin, it was already starting to come up. So I started buying it around 9,000. And today I think it's around 15 or 16,000. I don't know what it is. I don't count that. I just count the number of coins I have. That's it. And I'm buying more. The reason I like gold, silver, and Bitcoin is this. The trouble with the US dollar, the more it drops in value, the more they print. Let me say that again, the US dollar, the yen, the peso, the euro, as it drops in value, because interest rates keep dropping, they print more of it and people save it. Talk about losers. Get it through your head. They're printing it. It's getting worth, <coughs> it's worth less and less and less. Whereas Bitcoin, the thing I like about it, <coughs> excuse me, because the more, more valuable, more expensive Bitcoin gets, they print less of it, it's called a halving. So the price goes up, but the quantity comes down and get, check the dollar out. The value of the dollar comes down, but they print more of it. Why would you save it? But it's the same with gold and silver. And the reason I endorse silver is because everybody can afford it. Today, it costs you about $30 for a US Silver Eagle. I'm not saying it's gonna make you rich, but if you have 20 million of them, you'll be rich. If you just kept saving silver, the way I kept saving gold, and now I'm saving Bitcoin, you don't have to go to college to save it. Just buy it, hide it, buy it and hide it. You keep it out of the sight of the US government or your government. The people that bought gold, silver or Bitcoin, let's say live in Argentina, 
you're so much richer today than a person who saved pesos. And it's the same as my friend in Australia. You know, if you're saving the Aussie dollar, you're going to be crazy. Or the Singapore dollar, or the Canadian dollar. So, what's so, you know, how many ounces? What percent? Should you have 5%, 10%? The hell with the percentage. Just get as much as you can, because when this COVID thing finally blows over, the problems are still around. Our national debt is so high. We have so many people on entitlement plans. Our pensions are about to go broke. The U.S. government is broke. Our debt to our debt to GDP in America today is 130 percent debt to GDP. At 90 percent debt to GDP, it's over with. So we're from 90 percent to 130 percent. That means we can't pay off our bills. So they're going to have to keep printing more fake U.S. dollars or pesos or yen or euro, whatever you're saving. But right now, if you can get your hands on gold, silver, or Bitcoin, I don't care which one. But it's better than saving fake money. So I like Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm glad I bit the bullet at nine thousand. It was hard because you know gold was only about eighteen hundred. So to buy Bitcoin was hard. But I'm glad I have it today. I still plan on buying more. Because I think you know, Bitcoin is probably going to go to fifty thousand dollars. Gold is going to go to fifteen thousand dollars, and silver will probably go to two hundred dollars. And you're going to buy it then? You know, I have a very, very good friend. He's a pilot in the Marine Corps with me, and he was on the first round financing of Bitcoin. He has thousands of them. He was paying like thirty cents a coin, and today he's a mega millionaire, just owning. Bitcoin. He also owns the first-round shares of Facebook. So anyway, what, what what we're talking about here is this. You look at this here. The I is that the ultimate goal of a capitalist is to become an I. An I means insider. You're an insider in in the deal. So my friend was a marine pilot. You know, he was a, he's an insider on Facebook, and he's an insider on Bitcoin, and he's an insider on Uber. But that's where that money is made. You don't get there from the outside, which is the E and the S side. So, ladies and gentlemen, what Rich Dad stands for is the B and the I side, or you can go back to school and be going to E and the S side. But for right now, I don't care if you go back to school and become a doctor or a lawyer, whatever you, whatever you decide. But at this point in time, if you can't afford gold or Bitcoin, buy some silver. Just keep buying it. Hold on to it. Keep buying. Hold on. Don't keep it inside a bank. But the ride in gold, silver, and Bitcoin is about to run. The reasons you buy them are the same. It makes no difference. The reason you buy gold, silver, Bitcoin, because I don't trust our government.